In today's video, we're going to be going over what is the difference between density and specific gravity, because of course there's a little confusion about how they are the same and how they're different, and we're going to be talking and clear, clearing that up in this video. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed, so please subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. You can give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, share this video. Thank you very much. Support my channel. And in addition to that, I have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials where you can find my teachers, paid teachers website. Whether you're looking for practice problems, notes, examples with the answers, online simulations, all that is available. The link is in the description below. So let's get started with density and specific gravity. And of course, we're going to start with specific gravity here. And you can see that specific gravity is simply the ratio of the density of a substance to the density of a reference substance. We're going to be taking the ratio, we're going to be dividing one, the density of the substance, divided by the density of the reference substance. And this is the equation that we use to calculate specific gravity is simply, I'm just going to get my cursor here, is simply Sg for specific gravity is equal to, now this is the Greek letter rho. R-H-O as it's spelled in English, we say, and it's the Greek letter rho, and this is officially the symbol for density. A lot of times people will use a D, but officially the Greek symbol, the Greek letter rho, is the symbol for density. So we have the density of the substance, as it says here, divided by the density of the reference substance, and when you do that, you're dividing two densities, and therefore that value for the specific gravity of the substance is going to have no units because the units are going to cancel. Now, most commonly, and in most books you'll see, or a lot of books you'll see, that the rate that specific gravity is the ratio of a density of substance to the density of water. So this is oftentimes how you'll see it, but this is a more general form. We have the substance and the reference substance. Oftentimes, the reference substance is water because water is readily available. And we have a lot of water around so we use it water, but it does not have to be water, as I'll show you at the towards the uh, next few slides in the video. So um, now was, let's just go over quickly what density is. Now I've made other videos, of course, about density, how to solve for density, explanation of what density is. You can link to those videos in the upper right hand corner of this video. And density is defined as the amount of mass per unit of volume. It's mass per unit of volume, and this is how we calculate density. Once again, this is rho, the symbol for density, and it's the mass divided by the volume. The mass is the amount of matter that an object is made of, and the unit, the official SI unit for mass is the kilogram. It's not the gram, it's the kilogram. And for volume is the amount of space that an object occupies, and the official unit for volume, I guess it's not really official unit, but since it's measured in meters, uh, uh, the units for volume is meters cubed, all right, like that. And so for density, the official units for density are kilogram per meter cubed. Now, a lot of times in school, in most places, you don't really have a kilogram of stuff or a cubic meter of stuff of uh, material, so we often give the density as grams per cubic centimeter, or because one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter, we often give it as one gram, as grams per milliliter. But officially, the units for density is kilograms per meter cubed, just like that. Okay, now we can talk about the specific density of substances. And once again, we said that the specific, uh, uh, a specific gravity is the density of a substance uh, divided by, or the ratio of the density of the substance with the ratio of, of a reference substance. In this case, we're going to be talking about water. First, we'll do some examples with water. And you should remember that water has a density, we often say one, but it's we would say one gram per cubic centimeter. But since we're talking about the official units here, it's 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So if you have a cubic meter, a cube of water, that's one meter on each side, then you would have 1,000 kilograms of water. And we could calculate the specific gravity of various substances relative to water by taking the density of glass, for example, the density of glass, in general, is about 2,500 kilograms per cubic meter. We just divide those two values, okay, the density of the glass divided by the density of the water, and you get that the specific gravity is 2.5, like that. And once again, there's no units because the kilogram per meter squared, 
cubed and the kilogram per meter cubed are going to cancel on the top and the bottom of that fraction like that. And then you should know also, because we'll talk about this a little bit later, that if the specific gravity is more than one, then the object will sink in the reference substance. So that's why it's a little bit more dependent upon the reference substance, because glass is going to sink in water because this is um, greater than one. So now we can look at a different substance, pine, which is a kind of wood. Pine has a density of 373 kilograms per meter cubed. We take that and we divide that value by 1,000 and we come up that the specific gravity is 0 0.37. And that specific gravity is less than one. And if the specific gravity is less than one, then the object will float in the reference substance just like that. Okay? So that's how we calculate specific gravity. And again, it's without units. And it gives you like a reference of whether the material is going to float or sink or could be neutrally buoyant in the reference substance. Now, we're going to talk about how that works out a little bit more with uh, sinking and floating and, uh, and the percentages like this. So we have the specific gravity of pine was 0.37 and glass was 2.5. Now, if we take this number, the specific gravity, we multiply by 100, then we get a percentage, and that's 37%. And that means when I put a piece of pine in water... Okay, when I put a piece of pine in water, that 37% of it is going to be in the water, and the rest of it will be above the water like that. So it tells you how much it's going to sink into the water or the depth that it's going to sink into. Now, of course, with glass, the specific gravity is 2.5. If we multiply that by 100, we get 250. In, in this case, I mean, you can't really have more than 100, so to speak, but if it is more than 100%, then it's going to sink. So if you put a piece of glass in water, then it's going to sink all the way to the bottom water, being in this case our reference. So now we could use a different substance like HDPE, high-density polyethylene. It's just a kind of plastic. It has a density of 940 kilograms per meter cubed. And we get a specific gravity. We divide by 1,000, and we get 94, or 0.94, excuse me. And if we do the same thing, multiply by 100, we get 94%. And that means that if I take a piece of high-density polyethylene, uh, HDPE, then 94% of it is going to be underwater like that. So they don't all sink to the same level or float at the same height. Um, and it's, it's relative to the reference material, in this case, water. Okay, so one common object that you often talk about when you talk about whether it's uh, floating or sinking or how much of it is below water is when you have an iceberg. And so here we have a picture of an iceberg, and people often say, oh, 90% of the iceberg is underwater. And of course, that's true because we're going to figure out the specific gravity for ice in seawater. And when we do that, we find out that the, de the density of ice, now water is an unusual substance that when it freezes, when it gets close to freezing, then after uh, four degrees, it's going to then begin to become less dense. So the density of ice is actually less than one, or less than 1,000. It's 917. That's, uh, that's the density of ice. And then the seawater, which is basically water with salt in it and a bunch of other stuff, but it, it, because it has salt in it, it has a density a little greater than 1,000. In this case, it's 1,030. And when we divide those two, you get 0 0.89. You multiply that by 100, and then you find out that, yes, indeed, uh, uh, that's 89%. That means that 89% or 90% of that iceberg is underwater. Okay, so that's kind of where that comes from or how we get that value. Now, we can also talk about um, the specific gravity of substances or materials in a different reference material, a different reference substance. And in this case, we're going to say that now we're going to have our beaker and it's filled with glycerol. Glycerol is a clear liquid has a density of 1,260. It's often used as a, a food additive because it's sweet, and it's often used, it has some medical uses. Looks uh, similar to water, but um, it has a higher density. So now we have these values for uh, our percentages for the pine, the HDPE, and the glass. And now let's talk about the specific gravity of those materials in glycerol, so we're going to have our substance, which is going to be each of these, and our reference is going to be glycerol, so we're not going to use 1,000 anymore. We're going to use 1,260. For the density, we take the pine, and we divide that by 1,260, and you get 30%, not 37. So that means that 30, only 30% or less 
a little bit less than the 37, so that's going to float up a little higher in glycerol. You can makes a little bit of sense since that's more dense. And then we can do the same thing for the HDP, which we said before was 94%. Uh, uh, but now divided by 1260, the density of the glycerol, you get 0.75, so 75%. So it's going to be a little higher, float a little higher in the water. And um, we're not going to do the calculation, but of course, we remember the glass had a density of 2,500. That's more than the 1261, so the glass is still going to sink and stay in the bottom there uh, uh, of that beaker, even if we fill it with glycerol. We'd need something that has a density greater than a liquid that's greater than 2,500 like that. All right. So there we go. That is how we calculate specific gravity. We talked about how things float or sink. And that's a little bit of a difference between specific gravity and gravity. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Once again, you should click the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.